Right, order in the court, order in the court. Hello there and welcome back to VR Court. For those of you who have joined us, which is absolutely nobody, fantastic. We'd like to reiterate the crimes against Mr. Crusade Man, who is accused of picking up a train and chewing on it, as well as potentially other activities, if the lawyers would like to bring that into question. Mr. Crusade Man has pled not guilty to these via the plea of... ...or something along those lines. Today, our lead prosecutor... Yes, thank you, Mr. Crusade Man. Today, our lead prosecutor is Mr. Omega, a gentleman just out of law school with one case under his belt. And on the defence is Mr. Shiru, who I believe has more than one case under his belt and has observed how my courtroom works. So, all of the fun times. Now, we do have a procedure of court that we follow, which is basically the order of things go, and rules that we also follow. I'm aware that Mr. Shiro will have heard these rules many times. Mr. Crusade may have even heard these rules. I don't remember if I was using these ones before he was banned. And it's Hiro who has, but the prosecution has not. So, for the benefit of the prosecution, I shall go through the whole spiel. Well, I'm a, I'm a prosecutor. My old job is the bullshit. Pretty much. You make a great politician. And on that note, I do believe that I have finished my <laughs> spiel. Therefore, Thank we shall move you. forward in this court case and begin with the opening <coughs> statements. Mr. Shiro, if you please take the floor and make your opening statement for the court, I would vastly appreciate that. No objections in opening statements. Thank you, Your Honour. Right. To say to the court, I'll w accuse of Godzilla... Unfortunately, we will say he is slightly guilty of his crimes, but during the court case of this procedure, I will tell you how he is not guilty of these crimes due to the government and their medical claims. I will show you during this case that he is not guilty as a result of this. Okay. Interesting. Right, Mr. Omega, if you could please make your opening statement to the courtroom, we would vastly appreciate that. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure this guy's probably going to kick my ass, but I will say that I know pretty much 50 to 60 years of this guy's bullshit, so I know I'm going to win, because he is guilty. I can see it in his Shin Godzilla eyes. Mr. Crusade, control yourself. Oh, uh, 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 thank you then, Mr. Omega, for your opening statement. Right, two fairly interesting opening statements made there. I'm genuinely looking forward to both cases, one on a historical basis and one on a medical basis. So, genuinely, honestly, looking forward to this. And on that note, I'm going to lend the floor to Mr. Shiro oh, as the defence to make his fullest and frankest case using all of the evidence available to him. Mr. Omega, you may begin your objections as you see fit, following the rules. Mr. Shiro, the floor is yours and the defences. Thank you, Your Honour. So, I would like you to first bring up evidence number five, please. Number five. This trophy was brought to us, or brought to my clients, by the government. To tell the government, that if, from him, that he was a very good dinosaur. He'd been very good for a few years now, so they gave him a trophy as a goodwill gesture, since he has been so good. So, we would like to go to the next evidence, number six, please. Number six. As you can see, there's a bit of money on there, but that is the money that he has been earning through many, many different jobs. As we are aware, there was a job he did a while ago as a roofer, which he was a very good person at. Oh, same Godzilla. And also... Well, yes, I heard about that trial. It was a rather interesting one. Judge Dinosaur was talking about it for days. Uh, apologies, Mr. Shiro, I'm remissing. Please carry on. No worries. As you can see up there is his medicine. Now, unfortunately, this is not the medicine that he was originally given before the trophy. The, the, ev the medicine he had before the trophy kept him in a very calm state. Now, he, he, he has had some anger issues, as we've known over the years, as I'm sure the prosecution will probably be bringing up in his case. Um, he, has, he has gone on a few rampages over the years, but, you know, he's, he's been an angry dinosaur. He's been an angry Godzilla um, for many, many years, and he, he had to seek help. 
So, he went and got some medicine. Unfortunately, as we have found out, his medicine got changed. And it was just before our unfortunate incident with the train. Yes, he did knock over the train. We're not doubting that. But, it's not his fault that it was the medicine had been changed. And so, he had a relapse, unfortunately. So, as a result, it's his medicine that was the cause of the issue. His doctor gave him the wrong prescription, and as a result, his doctor is liable for his charges. So if we want to move on to evidence number... Seven? Seven, is it that's the next one? I think? It should be the next one, if you're going on order, yes. Yes. So, as we can see, it's the Bible of VR chat. He's become very, very positive in his good years. As a result, he's changed his ways. He's gone to church to become a very, very good Godzilla. As a result, he's very kind. He's a very gesturous Godzilla. Um, he does have his he does have his periods where he gets a little bit naughty. Unfortunately, as we can see by evidence number nine. Um, he does he does have his his ways of um relieving himself this is this yes this is a body pillow yes just to clarify with the court uh, yes to clarify this um, is the it's, critical evidence it's not a real person of a body pillow <laughs> um, that was acquired is, uh, offline is, four days before the incident just to make sure the court is aware of that Yes, it was a replacement for his last one because unfortunately he wrecked his last one by accident. He got a little bit too too much with it and he ended up ripping it apart. So he had to order himself a new one. Um, the thing is that he's a very lonely, lonely dinosaur. He's a very lonely Godzilla. He, so if we switch to evidence number eight, please. Number eight. He, he tends to take the body. He tends to take the body pillow wherever he goes. So uh, he, he took it to a local concert and. Yeah, we all want to all want to have some fun and everything, so uh, he doesn't get out much as a result of his his medicine making him a bit more calmer. He, he tries to be nice and, you know, he's he a big guy. It's not like he can go to many places, so a big open concert like this was a great experience for him. So he does try his best and he does try to hold himself back. So I believe as a result of this, if we go back to the medicine evidence, that medicine is the cause of the entire incident and it should not be blamed on my client whatsoever as a result of his medicine being changed before it happened, which caused the relapse. As a result, it's his doctor which should be charged. Which isn't me, I might ask. It's not me. Okay. I think that's about it for my case. I will, uh... Thank you, Mr. Shearing. I certainly wasn't disappointed with that one. The only thing I'd like to clarify before we move on to the prosecution's case is you're saying your client did cause a derailment of the train. Is that correct? Yes, but not on his own volition. Like we said, his medicine had been changed just before the incident happened, so as a result, it's his doctor which should be on trial, not my client. Okay. Which isn't me, I must add. Okay, that, well, you haven't got a medical license, I took it away. Very well, thank you for your case, Mr. Shuri. Uh, very interesting, quite pleased with the presentation there, very concise, well thought out. I'm rather looking forward to what the prosecution is going to be doing, I assume looking at a historical background, which is what happened during his uh, lovely roofing case, was one side focused very heavily on his background and the other didn't. But uh, having heard the full and frank case of the defence, it is now your turn to make a case, Mr. Omega. If you could please take the floor and present your full and frank case using all evidence. Mr. Defend, Mr. Shiro, you may object as you see fit. Okay, so as you know, I'm going to take a very strong historical standpoint to this, so uh, if we could uh, go straight to, I believe it's camera... Two. Camera number. Oh, that's fine. Number two. That's yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. In the years, ever since uh, Godzilla's first conception, uh, per se in the 50s, in the Shin era of his dynasty, as we call it, uh, he has been a very reckless person and has caused m many property damage. Is like that broken clock that was salvaged from the destruction of that train. Okay. So, I don't think anyone who would cause years of destruction should be considered innocent, especially 
if they're so reckless as to cause damage to public transport. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, go ahead with your Let's objection, Mr. Shiru. I am interested. I would like to ask the uh, prosecutor, if he is not accountable for his evidence anymore, then why would the state government proceed to give him trophies and awards for his good behaviour for the past five years of his service? An interesting point, uh, Mr. Omega. Uh, I mean, you kind of got a point there, but at the same time, us humans are pretty much stupid. We did try to nuke him a few times and that failed. Very valid point, to be fair. Although, in all reality, the only human here is the one sitting in the wheelchair, so, um... <sighs> okay. Thank you for your objection, Mr. Shiro. Uh, do take a seat. Uh, Mr. Omega, you may carry on with your case. Take into account what's being said. Okay. Okay. And, uh... I really did not come prepared with full order to show thanks, so give me a second to think about it. Not a problem, I understand. Uh, are you a T-800 or a T or a, a higher registration? <coughs> eh. I'm... I'm one of the lower model T-800s. The T-800, yes. Well, you need a bit longer to process stuff, then. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm a protogen, I know. Well, uh... <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and... Actually, considering this guy is a mindless animal that focuses on base instincts, go to camera four. Camera number four. Food. Yes. Yes. In one part of the train, there was a whole food stockpile, right? Well, that part of the train has suffered the most damage, suggesting that he ruthlessly tried to break in in order to eat. Yes. Uh, Mr. Omega, if I may ask yes. a question as the judge, if that's okay. Sure, go uh, ahead, you, why you, not? You've stated yourself that you are an expert in Godzilla and his history, is that correct? Yeah, I know some of the more basics and some of the more uh, complicated shit. Uh, what is Godzilla's... Ignoring the 1998 film, which isn't really considered canon in Japanese uh, lore, which mm. is what we're uh, running with here, if you will, what is Godzilla's primary diet. I'm curious. Well, from the existing trilogy from around the 50s when Japan owned the original IP, that would be mostly vegetation, which has been adapted into the more modern versions of him as well. Vegetation, bread, and many other forms of food, basically. That's why I didn't know. I wanted to clarify that this was a normal diet for Mr. Godzilla before we carried on. Thank you, Mr. Omega. Carry on with your case. Yes. Okay. Two and four. Now, I believe the next one I would like to show is uh, number one. Number one. The best number. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, this was taken from a secret, uh, like a... I don't know how you would call those, like, little secret areas of change, you know, those little compartment areas? I know yeah. what you're referring to, I, I, a cubby hole yeah. or something like that. I understand what you mean. Yeah. Yes, uh, the branding on this suggests a Louis Vuitton style cowboy hat with a release date of uh, five weeks from now, which suggests that he destroyed public, uh, very popular property. I don't know, yeah, I don't know, mate, I'm just bullshitting because of what I found at the scene. And that's absolutely fine, that's what I expect of lawyers. <laughs> uh, out yeah. of interest, yeah. if I may, you say this hat is due to release five weeks from now. Yes. Why is it on a train? Eh, you know, probably just for shipping to places for when it releases. Very good. Okay, carry on with your case yes. as you see fit. Yes. But yes. Uh, now, uh, number, uh, three. Number three. A burnt and a surviving Christmas present. 
suggesting that uh, a family or a child has just missed out on a very big day. Which says Godzilla really hates children. Objection, Your Honor. Go ahead, your objection, Mr. Sheeran. Just a little a court note, unfortunately, uh, my client is a part of the VR Chat Church, and in their Bible they do actually say about how much they love children. So why in the world would my client ever want to damage or hurt a child's Christmas, or their birthday, or just hurt a child in general? Fair point, however, in the original 2014 reboot, near the end of the film, it suggests that Godzilla has killed a child, which in the recent film, King of the Monsters, heavily implies that he has murdered a child. Your Honor, this is very clearly not the 2014 Godzilla. Yes, thank you. This is As a member of the gallery, I would politely request that you shut up and let the lawyer do his job. Thank you. Yes. The only Godzilla and that really I've not doesn't... represented here is the 1998 version, as far as I care. Carry on, Mr. Yeah. Omega. And, yes. And, to uh, let him have a little bit of, uh, history facts, Godzilla is the same throughout all of his interpretations. It's only from artistic standpoint that he changes his look. He puts on a bit of makeup every now and again, so what yes. sense. Hmm. But yeah. But yes, Godzilla hates kids. Recently killed one in 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 the recent film, and has been shown here as burning uh, either birthday or early Christmas presents. The day atomic like breath. Okay. Last piece of evidence, Mr. Omega. Yes. Yes, the uh, critical stuff, the uh, nine. Critical evidence. Uh, yes, the, the, that has been found near a very radioactive glowing substance that has been proven from a colleague of mine to be radioactive lizard semen, which means he had his way with the wreckage as well. Okay, before you carry on, Mr. Omega, I am thinking of a number between one and ten. Mr. Omega, what number am I thinking of? I'd say, uh, seven? Mr. Shiro, what number am I thinking of? I'm gonna have to go five. Okay, carry on with your case, Mr. Omega. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Mike? I have an objection. Uh, go ahead with your objection, Mr. Shiro. Mr. Master, please don't be a pain in the arse. Right. Right. I would like to point out to the, the uh, prosecutor that, of course, this pillar has been found on the scene, but we must remember that it was his pillar for when he was having his moments. So th there would be a leftover evidence on the pillow itself. Now, of course, he, why, I don't understand why he would want to, in public, um, do anything to a train. Because he has his lovely pillow that he just had to repurchase as a result. I mean, you never know. He probably wanted a threesome with it and didn't bother cleaning up afterwards. So we're looking to add a charge of public uh, exposure slash indecency then to the current standing charges, Mr. Omega. Sure. Yes, yes, well, yes. Way to do it. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. That's uh, all I have for that shit. Okay. So that's the end of your case. Right then. Well, a pair of very interesting cases as presented by the prosecution and the defense. Quite pleased with both cases here. Particularly pleased with the one the defense put forward as they basically follow my advice almost to a T. Which is fantastic. So now we're going to move on to the next facet of court which is of course witness <laughs> questioning. During witness questioning the prosecution will be given the option to pull up one of the two witnesses at a time. 
and question them. Once he has finished questioning them, the defence may cross-examine. If the prosecution does not wish to question them, that is fine. The defence will be given the opportunity instead, and then the prosecution may cross-examine if he has decided it is valid to the cause. We have two witnesses, Mr Crusade himself, who of course is the accused, might be worthy to get a testimony of what he thinks happened, since you've admitted that uh, he did not the train down, so his viewpoint will be very important. And the interpreter, Miss Itiru, who is currently acting as an interpreter for the damaged party of a gentleman who was in the train at the time of the incident. Perhaps the owner of the fancy hat. We don't know. You'll have to interpret that. So, Mr Omega, as the prosecution, would you like to call a witness to the stand? Eh. Nah, I'm not in much of an asking mood. Mr. Shiru, would you like to call a witness to the stand? I would. Very well. Who would you like to call, oh, Mr. Shiru? See this. I'd like to call Crusade. Mr. Crusade. Very well. Mr. Crusade, just remain on your chair. Now, before we begin, you are going to have to switch over to the English language for a moment and do the Pledge of Honesty. Plus, it would be in your best advantage to actually speak so we can understand what you're saying. Do you comprehend what I'm saying, Mr. Crusade? You're even better. There we go. So, Mr. Crusade, before we can begin, we have to do the Pledge of Honesty. All you have to do is repeat after me and you will be sworn in for testimony. Are you ready? Yes. I, Crusade Man. I, Crusade Man. Promise to tell the truth. Promise to tell the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Lest I find myself. Lest I find myself. In quite a sticky situation. In quite a sticky situation. As I attempt to clean up the mess I just made. As I attempt to clean up the mess I just made. Whilst trying not to get banned. Whilst trying not to get banned. From VR chat again. From VR chat again. <laughs> like the silly shit I am. Like the silly crap I am. Oh, so help me God. So help me God. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Crusade Man. Mr. Shearer, you may begin your questioning of the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> if I would like to bring up evidence six, I this is my correct one. Six. Yes. So, I have to ask my client is this your medication before or after? The train incident. This it is before the train incident. Sorry, I meant it's in the respect of is this the one that you had previously or is this the new one that your doctor supplied you? Which isn't me, which I had. So this is before the train accident, okay. Uh that was before the train accident. So this was the ev this this was the particular medicine you were given by your doctor as your yes. new prescription. Is that correct? Yes. I say, ask the money. Uh, is that from one of your j recent jobs? You know that you've. Oh yeah, yeah. Had? Definitely. Yeah, one of one of your good ones. You know, you've been a good person for the past Ooh, few years, haven't um, you? You've done decent jobs for people. The, um, in a few parks. Right. Like, asked me to do that. Mowing the grass would. I have to ask, would you, as a, you know, Godzilla, you know, after all these years of mowing people's lawn, doing people's roofs, and all these good jobs, would you, out of your right mind, want to hurt a child's birthday? No. Now, I must have been confused by Mechagodzilla, because there is another copy of me who likes to, uh dress up as me and make me look like I'm the bad guy. What? So you think it was? <laughs> it was here. Mr. Shiru, oh, if I may you. interject, you are allowed to tell your client to shut up. I'm not a good idea for to do! child's birthday. So, can I say that this medicine that you had was 
did it do anything to you as a result of this being a new prescription? Did you feel any different changes or anything? Did you remember anything of the particular day in question? Yes, I definitely I did feel a change of mood when I took it. Was it a good feeling or was it a horrible feeling? I mean, it was really a horrible, horrible feeling. It was a horrible feeling, was it? To the point of agony and all these horrible feelings. Did you actually remember anything of the incident? Did you remember the day at all? Did you recollect anything after taking this medicine for the first time? I only remember grabbing the train and then after that I lost it completely. So you, uh, were you, what about beforehand? Did you remember anything of the incident beforehand? Were you still coherent or was you, were you incoherent? Did you have any capability of controlling your actions in any way, shape or form? Yes. Well, so, actually. So you, so you couldn't control your actions during this, this whole thing that happened, yeah. this horrible thing that transpired, even... We can safely say for doubt that your medicine changing was the cause and reasoning for the actions that were occurred today. I will rest my case with a witness statementing there. Oh, very good, Mr. Shiro, very good. Mr. Lemega, would you like to cross-examine the witness or not? No, not really. I like to see where this shit is going without my interference. That's one way to do it. Okay, then. We will dismiss Mr. Crusade as a witness. I assume that Mr. Omega does not wish to call the other witness to the stand. Is that correct? No, I like to see where shit is going before I speak up. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Shiro. Would you like to call the other witness to the stand or not? Well, as both lawyers have chosen not to call Mr. Tiro as an interpreter up to the stand, then I'm afraid we cannot call her as a witness to the case, which I feel quite sorry for. I was looking forward to seeing what she was going to say. I'll have to ask you at the end of the quiz, Mr. Tiro, your input. But very well. In that case, then, we have finished with our witness questioning from this point, meaning that we are almost at the end of the trial as it currently stands. The next part of court is, of course, amendments. Amendments are nice and simple. If you wish to change any part of your court case as you have already currently presented it, you can do so now. The other lawyer may object to your change and the judge may not accept it, but now is the time to do it. Of course, if you do not wish to change anything, just say no. So, Mr. Omega, bearing what I've just said in mind, would you like to make any amendments to your court case? Nope. Fantastic. Mr. Shiru, would you like to make any amendments to your court case? I don't believe I have to. Ah, very good, which means that we can move on to the last part of court that requires any kind of lawyer-based input, which is, of course, the closing statements. Closing statements should be fairly short, concise, and just sum up your case as you have presented. There are, of course, no objections in closing statements, unless you're literally Sahihiling Hitler or some shit like that, <laughs> of which I may have a problem with that. So... Bearing that in mind, oh shit, Mr. Omega, would you please take a stand and present your closing statement to the court? Okay, well, well, I still feel, with all the evidence I have uh, displayed and my historical knowledge that I have somewhat displayed as well, I believe I, I am going to win this. But at the same time, I feel like I fucked up somewhere. So there, there. There that is. Okay. Interesting closing statement, but fair enough. Mr. Shiro, if you could please take a stand <laughs> and present your closing statement for the court, we would vastly Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to say that my client is not guilty due to the fact that it wasn't his fault. It was his medicine, which was provided by him by his doctor. As a result, he should not be held guilty for these crimes. As a result... I wish not to say that I am not his doctor. Thank you. Close his statement. 
Right. Thank you for your cases, closing statements, and everything, lawyers. This has been a very interesting case with two very different uh, cases put forward. Quite a lot to consider. So I am now going to move to the fun part, of course, which is Judge's Summary, where I get to talk about everything. And I will be beginning, of course, with the first case that was presented, which was the defense's case. I do like to start with the defense once I actually get this set up. This is my favourite bit of the entire court case. So on the defence's case, we started with evidence number five, which was a trophy that was handed to his client, Miss Godzilla, Miss Godzilla, Mr. Godzilla, whatever Godzilla, by the government slash city slash whoever for good behaviour in a civilised society, fitting in almost like a participation trophy, but for Godzilla. It's believable that a government may wish to positively reinforce positive changes towards Mr. Godzilla's behaviour in fitting into society as a whole. Perhaps having gotten over his small house-wrecking incident in relation to the roofing thing which happened before. Moving on, the next piece of evidence was medication and money. Now, the medication seems to be the main pivoting point that the defence is arresting their entire case on, and that is Mr. Godzilla's medication was changed not too long before the train incident. However, one of the things I'm a bit disappointed with the defence was the fact that, or on the prosecution as well for not bringing it up, is that it was never pointed out what Mr. Godzilla was on medication for. We assume it is oh, uh, some kind of mind-altering medication, or perhaps to produce less uranium radiation to kill everybody around, or just destroy less buildings, but this was never technically built upon. So for all we know, these are literally protein pills that allow Mr. Godzilla to keep his fantastic physique. But, on the other hand, as the prosecution, as I mentioned, did not question the medication in any way, shape or form, we will take the defence's word that it is necessary medication with potential mind-changing alterations. Hmm, I just kicked my fan. Also, there was money there that Mr. Godzilla has earned. So, once again, building into the fitting in with modern society, allegedly mowing gardens. I wonder if he used a lawnmower or the atomic breath. Quite an interesting query. The uh, next piece of evidence was a copy of the Bible of VR Chat Terms of Service. This was to point out that Mr. Crusade Man had basically become a born again VR Chat Christian. Possibly the worst crime you can commit in my courtroom, but not one that I'll actually send you to jail for. It was an interesting point, once again, building upon the character of Mr. Crusade as he attempts to blend into a semi normal society that we have here, considering who everybody involved is. Quite an interesting point, once again, character building. Not 100% relevant to the case, but it's there. I do like good character building. And, of course, two... Oh, wait, no, this wasn't this wasn't the first one. We then went to this piece of evidence, my mistake, which was a body pillar. Now, Mr. Godzilla, of course, is more or less one of a kind in this particular situation and very, very lonely. And pillows like this exist to help people who are very, very lonely. Mr. Godzilla apparently goes through quite a few of these, so I've gathered uh, a surprising amount, and this is the newest one ordered. So, in effect, it could be considered a pseudo-husband for Mr. Godzilla, and he would take uh, this a pillow on, well, day tickets and trips and so forth, as if it was a partner, which shows a human level of intelligence and relationship building for Mr. Godzilla. The fact it was on scene at the train, as uh, brought up by the prosecution, points out that... Mr. Godzilla may have retained these somewhat humanoid relationship feelings during his uh, medically induced outrage. But, interesting point, a lot of lot of character building, a lot of story, background building and medical related stuff in the defence's case. I do like a case like this because they don't present themselves that frequently. Normally it's just a case of he destroyed everything and then ate everything. But now we will move on to the defence's case, which means I have to remember the order that he went in, which I do believe started with evidence number two. A large collection of bits and pieces, which are things I believe were broken over time, although I do remember the clock was brought up to be on the train. Now, it was pointed out by the defence that Mr. Godzilla had indeed derailed the train. Nobody really brought up anything but the derailment of the train. For example, it was never pointed out if uh, the train had been flung around, although there are extra activities implied by the prosecution here, which I'll go into shortly. But we had a clock from the train and various other bits and pieces, assumably just debris, to prove that the train was indeed involved in an incident. But this was beyond doubt, as it was pointed out before the court case, that this had definitely happened. The next piece of evidence, if I recall, was evidence number four, which was an interesting piece from the prosecution, and they very kindly did answer my question in relation to 
the diet of a Godzilla. Now, one of the train's carriages, the most severely damaged, according to the prosecution and not counted by the defense, was the food transportation wagon, which contained a large amount of food that Mr. Crusade allegedly ate. Now, uh, I was somewhat surprised that the uh, prosecution wouldn't do any kind of witness questioning here because he could have asked about the diet and perhaps if he felt like eating all of it and perhaps even questioned if Mr. Godzilla was really in a medically induced rage or perhaps he was high on something or just pissed off because the trophy wasn't big enough. But he didn't choose to do that. But it's an interesting bit of character building here that Mr. Godzilla was in a mad rage and rather hungry. So that's a fair enough point. We then went to evidence number one, I do believe, which was a piece of evidence on the train. Now, now, I do believe the prosecution potentially once again missed a trick here by linking uh, this hat and the money to the witness that was not caught at the stand. Uh, this hat is allegedly a new top secret design, so I'm going to have to blur it because it's top secret, for a designer brand who I cannot remember and will not attempt to remember because fuck designer brands. Due to be released in five weeks time, that was being transported most likely in a safe box on the train. It wasn't pointed out any other relevance to this other than this was found on the train. Perhaps if this had been taken by Mr. Godzilla, or perhaps if it had been found with the volley pillar with another piece of evidence we're going to discuss, it might have led more credence that there could have been a motivation behind this outside of Godzilla being on a medically induced rampage. Also, money, because everybody likes a bit of money. But it is what it is. And then we went to evidence number three, which was a character building on the prosecution side, as we have here a Christmas slash birthday present one in fantastic condition, probably containing some kind of action figure, and one burnt to a crisp, which probably contained two action figures or the Super Nintendo. What a shame. And it was pointed out here that Mr. Godzilla potentially destroyed these in an attempt to ruin a child's birthday, pointing out that he hated children. Now, the uh, defense did point out here that Mr. Godzilla was part of the Church of VR, and they love children. I'm quite surprised the prosecution didn't go, love children? You mean love, love children? Is that the kind of thing Mr. Godzilla does? But the prosecution didn't do that and that's absolutely fine. I can't expect them to follow everything that I think they should do. But character building to show that Mr. Godzilla was actually quite a horrific nasty person. And then we move on to number nine. Once again, the critical evidence. The somewhat destroyed pillow with a large amount of a deposited material from Godzilla, as I shall refer to it, which biological tests did indeed prove that it was exactly what the prosecution claimed it was, implying that a public indecency charge is quite potentially valid here. This could be a side effect from the medication, but it was never brought up by the defense or never questioned, so I am led to believe that a charge of indecent behavior can be added on top of the current charges Mr. Godzilla is facing and will most likely not be dismissed. However, that does bring both cases to a close, which is always a fun thing. And I've actually rather enjoyed listening to this case because it has been more or less what I wanted. A case that is a little out of the normal and a little bit different. I had to actually do some thinking. It wasn't a case of saying he stabbed him with a knife. So I've been very pleased with the cases that uh, the lawyers have presented. And I thank you for your participation. But of course, I must stop babbling and we must move on to judgment. Now, bearing in mind the charges laid against Mr. Uh, Crusade Man, which would be destruction of property, rampage, and you know, general train destroy things, I am more in the leaning of believing what the defense says in this case, that it is possible that a change in medication, considering that Mr. Godzilla is also an incredibly complicated creature that potentially we don't understand fully here, and the effects of medication on him, may have caused a biological or psycho psychological change in his brain chemical makeup that could have led him to act out of line, more akin to his 1950s and 1960s counterpart. I wasn't entirely convinced by what the prosecution was putting forward as a case, although there was some very interesting information there. I didn't feel that it was strong enough to add a fair prosecution for Mr. Crusade Man in relation to those charges. So, on that basis, I find Mr. Crusade Man not guilty of purposely causing damage to the train. However, I am going to hold him responsible for the damage to the train and for the public indecency. Now, this is not an executionable charge. Mr. Godzilla will be fined the sum of 7,000 VR chat monies and will commit 160 hours of community service around railroad tracks cleaning up 
rubbish. I got you, I know how those Case dismissed. <laughs> Yo. I would have had you back in my life. <laughs> I love. Well, like I said, I'm not very good with the shit.